welcome to this virtual tour of Malorna College. My name is Barbara Laidlaw and I have the honour of being Principal of Malorna. In 2021, it'll be my ninth year as Principal of this fabulous college. Jeff McMillan is our Assistant Principal in charge of Transition and he's asked me to say a few words about myself. I've had the opportunity to teach in a wide variety of schools right across Victoria. The most smallest and the most isolated school I was in was a country school of 260 students. I've taught in southern region, in outer suburban schools and on the Mornington Peninsula. And then in the eastern suburbs, the largest school I've been in is a school of 1500 students and 140 staff. And I was in that school again for nine years. I've done some work for the region, and so Malorna is the fourth school that I've had the opportunity to be principal of. I think that schools play two vital roles in the life of a student. Firstly, schools provide students with authentic educational pathways. I think that the adults in students' lives, parents and teachers have a responsibility to open pathways and open doors and opportunities for students and to support them as they grow through adolescence and become more independent. But equally, we have to help our students to take responsibility for their own learning and to support them as they walk through the doorways and opportunities that we provide to them. We can't do the learning for them, but we can support them as they do this. Part of their educational pathway is also the co-curricular program that a school offers to students. And because of the generosity and talent of the wonderful teachers that we have at our school, our students have the opportunity to participate in music, in sport, in the environment, in leadership, the make space, lunchtime activities, a wide variety of opportunities. And no matter what the skills or interests of the students are, uh, then they have those, um, those opportunities at our school to, to belong and to participate. And I think secondly, schools provide students with a sense of certainty and identity. And this comes with, the, with knowing and feeling that they belong to a, a community and we have a strong sense of community at Malorna. I think that in today's world, and in our society, students no longer really participate in the rites of passage that perhaps people have in the past. For example, when people belong to church groups and maybe have their first communion or uh, their confirmation or um, various uh, community groups that might belong to perhaps the scouts or, or sporting clubs. So I think that schools can play a role in this and we have established rights and traditions and customs at our school that students have the sense of um, passing through our school and having things to look forward to uh, and the traditions that make the fabric of a school community. So we have camps, um, we have the presentation ball, we have the World Challenge overseas trip, um, we have uh, a school production every second year and I think one of the things I'd like to say is that we have things like um, our school assemblies where our whole school assembly at the start of the year we have a tradition of welcoming our year sevens into the school they all proceed into the PAC the performing arts centre all of the students in the school clap cheer welcome them in as they come in home group at a time and then at the end of the year we farewell our year 12s. We have a ceremony which is called lighting the flame where the students pass on the lighting of the flame of knowledge to the next group of, of year 12s that are going to be taking um, their place in the following year and we farewell our year 12s in the PAC so it's kind of like a dovetail and the students can see the, the yin and the yang at the start of their life at school and then the, the conclusion of their life at school. And these traditions and rites of passage help students to create that sense of belonging in our community. We also, I think, as part of this sense of identity and certainty, we help our students to have confidence in knowing how to behave themselves when 
no matter what public event that they're participating in. So at our assemblies, which are formal assemblies, we teach our students how to be an audience and when to applaud, when to be quiet. Um, and so we, and, and how to behave uh, at live performances, for example, with music performances. So when our students go out from the school on excursions, they go to the gallery, um, they participate in our Skills at the Lorna program, our students are confident because they know no matter where they are, they know how to behave. And so part of this is that we have a very strong saying at our school, and that is that every student and every staff member is an ambassador of Malorna College. And very often I get emails and phone calls from members of the public who have no association with our school, who ring to compliment us on how our students have behaved. Could be um, at Federation Square, could be at a gallery, could be anywhere around the city on public transport. And when this happens, I put it on campus, I congratulate the students, I go to their classroom, and I let our community know that members of the public have, have um, acknowledged our students' behaviour. And part of this is that we say to our students that part of honouring the school and being part of our school community and being an ambassador of the school is how they wear their uniform. And we, we say to our students that they really must wear their uniform um, respectfully because that shows that they are being positive um, role models and ambassadors for our school. So at Malorna, we live our values of curiosity, courage and community. Every student can tell you how these three core values of our school influence their academic work, the sporting field, whatever endeavour they're involved in in our school. It's embedded in our school community and our activities every day of our, of our school life. And that starts with our year seven camp, when that's when the, the students are first introduced to our school values. So as principal of Malorna, it's been my goal to be the government secondary school of first choice for all of the families in our neighbourhood so that they can send their students to our school with confidence knowing that their children will get a fabulous education, will be supported in their education as they pass through school and will have terrific opportunities to be involved in a co-curricular program and have that strong sense of belonging to a school community. And to this end, I'm not really interested in our school becoming a huge school with a very large enrolment because it's really not who our school is. We are interested in being a strong community school and we um, will cap our enrolments at six classes in year seven. Uh, and so we, we enrol from our na local neighbourhood first. And then if we have room, then we'll enrol from um, some students from out of our neighbourhood. But then after year seven, after, sorry, after grade six into year seven, we don't enrol students from outside our neighbourhood because we are a neighbourhood school and this is what we describe ourselves in, uh, as and this is what we, that's what we live every day. So when you get the opportunity to come to open night, you'll see that our school is very proud of, of uh, who we are. The students volunteer to be part of open night. We have far more volunteers than we have activities for them to be involved in. Very often we have a third of the school of our students um, turning up for an uh, open night uh, to celebrate being part of the Moana community. Um, if you could come on a tour, you would see that our school is a very calm and harmonious place. Every adolescent at some point gets a bit snippy and it doesn't mean that students at Moana doesn't, don't on occasions get snippy, snippy with one another or maybe snippy at a teacher. Um, but overall, it's remarkable about how harmonious our school is and we have such very low levels of misbehaviour. And very often amongst students, if there's any sort of disquiet or dispute, uh, it's settled between students uh, harmoniously um, rather than through any kind of aggression because students say to one another, well, that's not how we act at Moana, that's not, that's not what we do. 
And so then maybe some of the adults will find out about it later. Um, so it's a place where teachers love to come to work, where we have casual relief teachers who are very keen to come to work at our school. And it's because of the wonderful students that we have in, in at Malorna. So in conclusion, I offer you my very best wishes as you make your decision about which school you'd like to send your child to for uh, their high school years. And particularly, I appreciate that it's a very big decision if your child, child is the eldest in your family, because very often uh, families send all of their family to the same school and we appreciate this it's not very often that families will send one child to one high school and then another child to another one so we know that you're making a family decision if your your child is the eldest child and i believe that you will know when you are looking at schools which one you think is going to be right for your child and for your family uh, and i wish you all the best with that decision and so in conclusion, I'd like to suggest that you have a look at our Facebook page. The videos and the photos really give you a great sense of life at our school and who we are. And I think it gives you a sense of our community and uh, how the students at our school do have a sense of belonging. And I think you can also see in our Facebook videos, the sense of community and loyalty uh, and dedication that our staff have for our students. So thank you for participating in the virtual tour and I wish you all the best with your decision for the future. Okay, thank you Barbara for that uh, introduction. My name is Jeff McMillan, uh, one of the assistant principals at Malorna, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our uh, virtual tour video that we put together for our uh, prospective students in uh, grade four, five and six. So what we're looking at now is um, the, the front of the school. Uh, this is our main reception area. And as I, I pan around, we're heading and looking towards now Mitcham Road. So there is our AFL oval and cricket pitch. And as I keep panning around, we're starting to see the front uh, car park of the school, our main roundabout area uh, for pick up and drop off. Uh, and then further around to the left is, uh, you can see there Tirana Street and our soccer pitch. So this is the main entrance to the school that uh, many of you might know, um, main part of reception through here. I'm gonna take you through to our central courtyard area. This is uh, pretty much right in the middle of the school. And what you're looking at here, a beautiful shade sale area for students to um, sit and, and eat their uh, recess or, or lunch or to spend some time with each other and sitting around in some seats. This is the, uh, the back of the library here is what we're looking at and our staff center or main staff room. As I swing around here, we're starting to see um, what we is known as F-Wing. So a lot of these are standard generic uh, classrooms, uh, English, math, commerce, business, uh, history, uh, health, PE, some of those sort of um, standard classrooms. Um, our German classroom through here as I move around, we can't really see it. The stadium is at the back here. And then we're looking at the rear of the school. This is the south of the school uh, that adjoins Mitcham Primary School. So we're looking here at our VCE Learning Center, our school canteen, open at uh, recess and lunch times, and then through to the back of E-Wing Science and Food and, and Maker Space. So this is a little space in the middle of our school. With beautiful shade sales. Okay, we're now going to move into looking at some of our um, PE and sport facilities and uh, take you through uh, some of those facilities at Malona College. I'd like to welcome Corinne, who is our head of PE and health at Malona. Hello, Corinne, how are you? Hi, good, good. Excellent. Uh, before we start looking at these facilities, Corinne, can you take us through a bit of your background? How long have you been at Malona? What do you teach? Those sort of things. Yeah, sure. So I've been at Milana for, I think, eight years now. So it's the second school I've worked at and um, really loved my time here teaching junior PE, senior PE, health, science and biology, and also in our sport program as well. So a bit of a mixture of in the classroom and out doing the practical stuff with the kids as well. Okay. What's your role as head of PE health? What do you, what do you mainly do? 
Yeah, sure. So my role is mainly based around ensuring that the curriculum that's delivered in each and every one of our junior and senior classes is consistent with the highest quality curriculum that we can offer, ensuring that it's in line with what every single other school is doing in Victoria and ensuring that the students get a complete breadth of sports within their physical activity classes, but also ensuring that that health curriculum is also met as well. Okay. What are we seeing here, Corinne? What's, what's this? This is on Tirana Street. What are we looking at? Yeah, so this is our um, huge space that's like an astro turf kind of feel on underfoot. Um, it's got three spaces for tennis courts, so this gets a lot of work out in the summertime with our sport program as well. The markings on the court also allow outdoor soccer, lacrosse, you can see there's netball rings as well, so it gives us an extra space if we need um, more reason to have netball running. And it really gets quite a bit of use during lunchtimes as well. Lots of the kids are out here, um, yeah, playing around, which is really great to see as well. Excellent. As we pan around, we're starting to head towards the corner of Tirana and Springfield Road. What are we, what are we seeing here? So just in your bottom left corner there, you can sort of see a bit of red dirt. That's our baseball, softball pitch area. Um, we've got a great program for that at our school. And we've also got a very big soccer pitch there. So um, this gets used in the winter time for soccer. We also run our athletics out on this oval, ultimate frisbee, touch footy. Um, yeah, it's a great space for all of those sports there. Okay, as I pan around a bit further, what are we seeing now? So in, right over the other side is another oval as well, which is um, used a lot in um, the sports of football and cricket. But that court you can see just in the distance there as well is another outdoor basketball court, um, which again is an extra spare one that we can use to ensure all our students get access to um, basketball all year round, whether it's indoors or outdoors. Okay, we're now swinging around looking back at the, uh, the main stadium. Um, so this stadium was built for memory in the 90s by the Victorian State Government. Uh, what are we looking at here? What are we seeing? Yeah, so we've got a big double indoor gymnasium. So we've got two basketball courts there with a divider that comes down the middle so we can separate those for two separate classes or run a big group session together. We've also got those basketball rings that retract up into the ceiling to allow for netball rings to be put in place as well and as per usual they're multi-purpose they've got lots of lines on the courts for badminton volleyball netball basketball so um, yeah all the sports are really catered for we've also got our electronic basketball um, scoring boards there as well um, so the kids can use them throughout our sessions as well and just panning around here we've got our, our sports storeroom there and up the top is our mezzanine area which uh, we have multiple table tennis courts so this is really well used uh, by providers outside of the school as well as our sport program which offers table tennis and in that room where you can see that student there is our weights room so we've got a full set of gym equipment in there treadmill um, bikes rowers weights um, that really gives our senior students a great opportunity to put together training programs and also the junior students to, to get a bit of a feel for some of those cardio pieces of equipment as well. Okay, now this stadium is open every lunchtime, Corinne, would encourage kids to, to stay active and play sport? Yeah, absolutely. There's always a teacher rostered on for yard duty in here. So every lunchtime, the kids can come in, rain, hail or shine, and there'll be someone here to help them out, get the equipment that they need. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's move across to one of our newer spaces that is, uh, is very new. Um, and this is our new outdoor courts. So I'm going to take you through to the new hard courts. What are we seeing here, Corinne? Yeah, this is really exciting. We've finally got some, some courts here. We haven't had a heap of time to use these, as Jeff just said, they're brand new. So we've got a basketball court here. Um, again, awesome for our sport program. So we've got room to have all of our students. 
three basketball rings. So again, a lot of use at lunch times and recess, but again, great for training for our students. And then over on this court here is a single purpose netball court. So you'll notice the lines on there are only for netball. So we're really about inclusion and trying to get as many girls involved in sport as possible. And this is just one way to show how much we really try and promote, um, promote that for our students as well. So they've got their own space um, to be able to train on that. And it gives us a good lead up into competition time for sport as well. And then panning around here, we've got our Gaga pit. Uh, that's sort of a, more of a recreational sport, but the kids are really loving that, um, having just gotten used to this space. And then we've also got six down ball courts. So again, mainly used for recreational activities. Um, we've got four people ones or six people ones as well. And you can see as we come around here, we've got our other Gaga pit up the end there that attract a lot of people to them during recess and lunchtime as well. So a really um, nice, fresh uh, look for our school and it's getting a lot of use um, in the short time that we've had it. So another great facility for us to use. Okay, guys, we're there. now gonna uh, have a closer look into our food room and I wanna introduce uh, Lisa, who is one of our food teachers. Uh, hello, Lisa, how are you? Really well, thanks. Um, Jeff, how are you? Yeah, excellent. Really, really good. So before we have a closer look at the food room, a bit of background about yourself, Lisa. How long have you been at the school for and, and the sort of subjects that you teach? I've been at Malorna since 2006, so that's 14 years, and I'm predominantly a food studies teacher. And I teach um, from Year 7 through to Year 12. And then I occasionally do other subjects such as sport and, um, you know, Year 7 Challenge and I really enjoy my role at Moloana. Excellent. Now Lisa, this is a fairly new room. I think this was built in 2017, I think brings it, if, I'm, if my memory's correct, 2017. So this looks a little bit different to the previous room, Lisa, correct? That's correct. We um, certainly have moved into a really modern dynamic space into um, 2017, just sensational. Excellent. So what are we looking at down the end here, Lisa? Can you explain what this, what this section down the end here is? So in the food studies room, we have um, our, our, kitchen, our classroom is in two sections. So we've got our classroom um, where we do theory work and where students also get to see demonstrations. So you can actually see me in the picture um, at the bench and we're really fortunate that we have the opportunity to do um, demonstrations using overhead cameras. So it's a really, as I said, dynamic space where students can um, follow the recipe and have instruction. So they would get a demonstration that we can see you here working on the main um, workstation, I guess. We've got cameras up on the ceiling here that are projecting That's here correct. onto the whiteboard. Um, and the students are sitting around here and clearly see what to do in the demonstration and then they head off and do their independent work correct. So as we move around the room, talk us through what we're seeing now. So each um, students have uh, stations where they work at, so they have a trolley with all their equipment and the students are responsible for cleaning and sorting their equipment um, and they've got um, at their stations, they have an electric oven and gas cooktops and obviously microwaves to use. So most of their equipment um, is at their fingertips. Okay. And then we have specialist equipment away in cupboards um, for specific specific racks. Students would normally work in pairs at these stations, wouldn't they? That's correct. Okay, and cool. so they um, students get to choose which partner they work with so, um, and they're creatures of habit. They often find their favourite bench and might use it for multiple years. Okay, excellent. And what, what are we seeing down the end here, this space here? So we're in the food studies room. We have a food prep area where my assistant Belinda will get all the food ready for the pracs um, and um, recipes and things. So we have a big um, food area a food storage area at the back. Excellent. And then this is the uh, this is the view looking south into Mitcham Primary School, which is right next door. 
and some students that are doing a bit of a bit of prac work there. Now to finish off, tell us a little bit about what students would look forward to for Year 7 food. What does Year 7 food look like? Oh, year 7 food is so dynamic. So we build upon skills that students may already bring to food studies. So um, students will learn about safety and hygiene, but they get to cook every second week. So food studies, every year seven student um, gets to do food studies and they make um, fried rice, um, scones, a um, whole range of different recipes and um, are able to build upon skills and then hopefully um, cook at home as well. So guys, we're now going to have a look at the, uh, the Junior Learning Centre in B-Wing and I want to introduce Sean Weatherall, who is our Year 7 Coordinator. Um, welcome, Sean. G'day, how are you? Yeah, excellent. So, Sean, before we start and before you explain what we're looking at here, can you give us a bit of background in terms of um, how long you've been at Malorna College? Uh, what do you teach? Um, and I guess, what is your role as a Year 7 Coordinator? Yeah, sure. So I've been at Malorna now for six years. I've uh, been the Year 7 coordinator for three of those six years. Uh, I'm mostly a maths and science teacher with a large part of my teaching area in the junior areas. So mostly well, what I do is I hang around this B-Wing area, which is where the juniors tend to do a bit of their learning. I actually have an office there, which you can see on the right. And so as a coordinator, I try and make myself available for students when they have questions or concerns. Uh, so some simple things like I've forgotten my locker combination, I can't get in, or I don't know my computer password, log into Compass, all the way through to things like um, I'm struggling academically and I need more support, what can I do to offer, uh, talking to parents when we feel like there are problems that we can assist and help with, or vice versa, there are things happening at home and parents need to contact someone to let them know, hey, um, this is happening, what can we, what's going to change? And so forth so okay yeah so that sort of in between contact person for the students at school and the parents at home just to sort of try and make things smooth smoothly transition okay so sean what are we looking at here what's this space particularly yeah so this is our b wing area uh, you can sort of see on the left there those doors leading to our b2 and our b3 classrooms which are our common core classrooms so our juniors spend a lot of their math science uh oh, sorry maths english and humanities lessons in there and sort of down the corridor to the side is our science rooms, uh, which the kids spend the time there. So they spend a lot of their time here for their core subjects. So they get really familiar with one of these rooms. Um, you can see actually see a class in there right now. So they're having a bit of a go. So because the students are in there for a big portion of their year, we get to really make, take ownership of the room and sort of make it a little bit of our own space and really build onto the things in there. At the same time, you can sort of see our little presentation space in the middle there with a the screen. So sometimes if uh, we're combining classes together and want to share a thing with the kids, if we have a guest speaker come in and things like that, then we, we use this space as well. And, okay. uh, commonly in the previous years, we've used this for our student, uh, our year seven challenge evenings, yep. where the students have presented some of their work to their parents. Okay, and this is normally open on wet weather day, Sean? Yeah, sure it is. So if we do have a wet weather day and the kids need to come in, they pop in. Um, we do open up a couple of the classrooms so you can have a bit of a chatter around, but it's just a chance to keep dry and still have that socialisation. Okay. And these rooms here particularly, these are uh, these are double classrooms, correct? There's a wall here yeah. that classes could join together if necessary? Yeah, that, that is correct. So there's a sliding door between the, those two rooms there. So if we ever had two classes running at the same time, the teachers felt, well, let's do a combined class or let's do a bit of team teaching, just opens up that uh, that opportunity for that to happen within the classes and sort of just make a bit more of a unique experience for the kids. Okay. And then if we just move out through here, we're heading towards, uh, I guess, the corner of uh, Mitcham and Springfield Road. So what's this area here, Sean? Yeah, so this is our outdoor amphitheater area. So nice presentation space again. If it's beautiful weather, we'd like to get the kids out here and have a chat with them. Um, the really predominant area that our year sevens and juniors like to play around the area. So uh, it's a really common four square or six square area that the kids like to use. Um, and there's always a bit of interaction happening around here. Excellent. So generally the year sevens would use this space? Yeah, big, big year seven area because it's so close to their common classrooms, really close to the year seven locker bay, which is just down one little corridor coming up on your left. Yep. Uh, and, and, you know, close to the coordinator's office as well. So sort of everything inconvenience, but yeah. 
really nice Excellent. area to hang out. Rightio. So we're now moving into uh, one of our science rooms, and it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Michael. Hello, Michael. How are you going? Yeah, good. Thanks, Jeff. Excellent. So, Michael, before we start and talk about this science room, can you give us a bit of background about uh, how long you've been at Malorna? What do you teach? Just a bit of background about yourself, please. Yeah, sure. I've, uh, this is my fourth year, nearly end of the fourth year at Malorna. And uh, some of my primary roles, I look after all the, uh, the STEM faculty. So science, technology, engineering and maths subjects across the, uh, across the campus. So that includes uh, obviously the science rooms that we're about to look at, as well as the maker space and other areas of technology, uh, right through food technology or the traditional technologies and sort of digital areas as well. Okay. So it's, yep. You, you uh, background at some other schools as well. And I think you used to work in um, pharmaceuticals, I think, before school, before education. Yeah, so I'm one of the primary chem uh, chemistry teachers at the college and I've uh, been teaching now well over 15 years as a, a change of career actually so yes as you said Jeff uh, prior to moving into teaching I was working in pharmaceuticals in research and education um, with a large company called Roche. Uh, really enjoyed the education there working with specialists, doctors, pharmacists and such and uh, want to develop that passion for science teaching and mathematical teaching so moved into education was working at Yarra Junction for you know first six years and then actually Jeff and I, we worked together at uh, one Turner College for a, another sort of seven years uh, in the senior school area there before the opportunity came to Malorna, which has been a, a fantastic change, I must admit. Great, um, excellent, excellent. So as we look around the room, Michael, just tell me if you want to go left or right, what are we, what are we seeing? This is one of our B-Wing B junior science rooms. What are, we, what are we seeing here? Yeah, look, we've been really fortunate with the renovations recently to the college that we've got outstanding junior and senior science rooms. So we're looking at a junior science room and uh, it's a bit of a change from the traditional shape. So we've got practical workbenches that are very specific for, for science teaching. So you'll see things like obviously uh, the, the water taps there, they've got PowerPoints specifically in the middle, lots of equipment tucked away in the shelves and drawers for, for quick access for the students when we're doing investigations. And of course, gas taps for Bunsen burners and, and heating activities. So they're specifically built and we designed them in a way that allowed more collaboration. And that's a bit of a theme through our science rooms because science is really about application of the skills, application of the knowledge, working on real world sort of problems. And we're really heavily into student designed investigations and exploring a concept, taking the theory and just seeing how far they can, can learn from a theory into practical. So you'll see that we've got students working in either end of the benches. That allows us to really uh, easily work with groups of students and for them to collaborate and share their uh, experimental results, for example. Um, and for us to be able to supervise and support the students more easily than when you've got traditionally benches tucked around the sides and you're often got your back to them. So this is working really, really well. And then uh, so in the end here, we've got a different sort of setup to the room. We have. So again, keeping the theme of collaboration of students uh, learning, then you'll notice the tables are all in sort of in pods or groups and that allows them to work together uh, along with their teacher to explore the theoretical component and to conduct things like uh, the theoretical research and the internet research using their devices, which of course they all have and the interactive televisions and, and whiteboards and such. So it's a really nice blend because we can jump straight from those uh, that the sort of seat to table area straight onto some activities and demonstrations. Okay, Michael, we're now looking at um, what we call it the, our makerspace area. So if you can explain, what are we uh, what are we seeing here? Well, we're looking at one of the rooms within the makerspace. There's actually two distinct areas in our makerspace area. The one we're looking at the moment we would call our design or robotics lab, and so this is a space that's set up for um, both electives and some core classes around digital technologies. Uh, it's a room filled with some 3D printers, we've got a laser cutter, we've got a whole uh, range of different robotics uh, kits ranging from things like Spiro balls that some students are quite familiar with through to very complex Arduino programming kits that the students can access. And it's a very flexible space, so we don't keep all the equipment out um, for any one subject. Any teacher can sort of book this space to use if they're wanting to work on some projects. Um, in a range of different subjects. The room we're looking at is a very clean space, so we also use it for electronics. 
The room next door, which we can't see at the moment, but is also a, uh, as part of the maker space and a bookable area by teachers, is a is much more a construction sort of space. And that's got traditional wood technology area, it's textiles, range of sewing machines and such for that, and a range of other craft material that, so that students can access that uh, both at lunch times and in a range of their subjects. Okay, so this space, uh, just to clarify, would be used by some subjects, um, so invent and learn and robotics and that, but apart from that, Correct. it's also a bookable space. So on any given day, we could see a, a year seven health class, we could see a year 12 physics class, any teacher, any classroom can use these spaces. Yeah, it's probably it's a project-based work. It is very much. It's one of the unique features actually of our maker space in that it's completely bookable. Traditionally, our teachers of say mathematics, English or whatever, would never have access to a technology area if they wanted to run a project or you let students create models or be able to present things and work on projects in a different way. This is a totally bookable space. So yeah, any given day, and these books solid throughout the year, you'll see a range of classes uh, undertaking different projects in this space because we want all our students to be able to apply their learning and their interests and their skills in a range of different subject areas. So lots of maths projects, for example, where they might be doing design and measurement, um, science projects, but including humanities, geography, uh, health, you name it. They will be coming in here, learning a concept and using sort of a design process to apply that. So they have full access to 3D printers or the laser cutter or any of the robotic equipment if that helps them, as well as craft materials, woodworking materials, whatever they may require to, to really demonstrate through a project, a physical project, a concept. Okay, and I think if you've uh, alluded to it before, but these spaces are open at lunch times, correct? So we'd encourage our Year 7 students to, to come and use these spaces and, and uh, work on their projects open at lunch, most lunch times? Yeah, I tend to keep it open uh, most, most lunch times throughout the week. And we've got students working on any range of self-interest projects. So they might be wanting to finish off a project from class, or they may be wanting to simply build something or learn some new skills. So that's a bit more one-on-one -on -one with myself uh, and some other interested teachers working with students or small groups of students, teaching them other range of skills that they're interested in applying. Sometimes they just want to come in and uh, you know bring something from home that they want to work on. It might be a broken piece of equipment and they want to learn how to pull that apart and, and play with that. And that's really what a makerspace is best at too coming in and just exploring, hacking away and, and seeing what you can repurpose that or ups, up, you know, sort of upcycle those equipment for. It's really, really good fun and open pretty much most days a week. Okay, excellent. Thanks for your time, Michael. No worries. Okay, we're now gonna have a closer look at the uh, library. It's my great pleasure to welcome Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen, how are you? Hi, how are you going? Excellent. So Kathleen, as we move around the library, if you can explain uh, what we're seeing. Catherine is Catherine is our school librarian or there's another title Kathleen, the library technician I think is what it's called these days. Yes, or, or library coordinator. Library coordinator, excellent. So what are we seeing Kathleen as I zoom around the library? Just take us through what the, the key sections are. Okay, as you walk in you're looking at all the novels that we have available. They're separated into Premier's Reading Challenge and Non-Premier's Reading Challenge because we really try and support that. As you, and then you move around towards the corner, you've got all your desks where we have homework club, you've got your non-fiction at the back, your real stories, your biographies, and then we move into your short stories if you're wanting a quicker read. And then we're then moving on to our graphic novels, which is built up based on um, student recommendations. Then we have our picture books, then another quiet spot to relax and you've got magazines and newspapers in the corner there. And then we've got our photocopier, colour photocopier where it's uh, for the students to use. Um, and then as you move around, you come to the circulation desk and this is where you'll come if you want a recommendation, you want help with the photocopier, any questions you're welcome to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, and the library is open every lunchtime, Kathleen, correct? Yes, it is. So we encourage kids to come and uh, read a book or to do their homework or to play some board games or... Oh, that's right. And that's another thing. We have board games up at the counter there. So you just come and ask and you can have a pack of cards or a board game to use if you want to play with your friends at lunchtime. Excellent. Okay, thanks for your help, Kathleen. Okay, that's, You're welcome. Uh, that concludes our uh, virtual tour video. We hope that's been um, helpful for you to get a bit of an insight into the, um, the inner workings of Malorna College and have a bit of a look around 
our buildings and grounds. Thank you for taking the time uh, to watch this video. Um, please uh, make contact with myself at the school if you have any questions around uh, transition or, or, or subjects or how the actual uh, enrolment process um, takes place. Uh, you're more than welcome to call me at the college or send me an email also at the Malorna um, email address, which is malorna.sc at education.vic.gov.au. Uh, the main reception phone number 039 874 3422. Thank you for joining.